The transfer function is a fundamental concept of an LTI system. It's very tightly related to the idea of the impulse response function. What the transfer function is, is the Laplace transform of the impulse response function. So if we remember, right, our impulse response function was written down as H of T. If we take the Laplace transform of that, and the Laplace transform is usually denoted by this, this curvy L, then we will get a function H of S that is the impulse response function, but in the Laplace domain. And this function is the transfer function. And the reason that the transfer function is so important is just like the impulse response function tells you everything about the system when you're looking at it from an LTI system, when you're looking at it in the time domain, H of S, the transfer function, tells you everything that you want to know about the function only in the Laplace domain. And because of the power and elegance of the Laplace domain, looking at things with, in terms of H and S to understand the behavior of your LTI system is so much easier to do when you have it in terms of S in the Laplace space than it is in S and H, as H of T. For many LTI systems, H of S can simply be represented as some equation, some, some, some ratio of parameters, some, uh, some fraction of S is up here. Let's say alpha S plus beta divided by some other terms in terms of S here. AS squared plus BS plus C. And this equation, this ratio here, right? There's something here in, over by, uh, in terms of S divided by something else in terms of S will to completely characterize your, your, your system, your LTI system. And even better, you can now make understandings, you can understand what's going on with your system by looking at what's on top here and what's on the bottom. So let's take a moment to think about this. And there's actually terms for these. These, the numbers up here are called the zeros. Or when you set this equal to zero, you get the zeros of the, you know, you get the zeros of the transfer function, which are when the numerator is equal to zero. And similarly, if we set this equal to zero, we get our poles. And the zeros and the poles both tell us very important characteristics of our system. When the zeros, right, the things, the items on the numerator appear are zero, are equal to zero, what happens to the value of h of s? Let's say in this case, we have a zero, and that occurs when s is, is negative, what is this? The zero for this is going to be negative alpha b over alpha, right? If we have, if, if s is equal to negative b over alpha, then this numerator is zero. And if the numerator of a fraction is zero, then the entire expression is zero. And so what this tells us is that when you pass in the complex frequency, negative b over alpha, into this as the input to this linear time invariant system, the output, the y of t, is zero. So if input is equal to a zero, then y of t, or your output, y, is equal to zero. That's sort of un, you know, in, uh, intuitive and, and simple to understand. Similarly, the closer you get to your zero, the smaller your, your transfer function, your output's going to be. On the other hand here, what happens if you set your poles, the under the denominator equal to zero. Well, in that case, what happens to an equation if you divide it by zero? 
it's undefined, right? It's either going to blow up to positive or negative infinity. What that means is that is that when you get to a pole, if you set S equal to one of the poles, right, the denominator being equal to zero, and you pass that into your input, into your into your transfer function, then uh, as the input to your transfer function to your system, then your output is going to explode. It's going to be undefined. It's going to rail. It's going to be either at a huge, huge number or a very, very small number. And worse, uh, or very, very small, uh, very, very large negative number. What's worse about this is that that's not useful because then your system isn't producing meaningful output, right? It's, it's, it's broken. So you do a lot, everything you can to avoid um, hitting the poles. Because if you hit the poles, then your, your, your system breaks. And so you want to know where the poles are for your LTI system so that you can, you can properly characterize the, the behavior of your, um, of your system.